we are going to continue this section five um, over rhombuses and squares and we are on example number two um, we are asked to write a two column proof um, we are given that this shape this quadrilateral is a parallelogram so remember all six of those characteristics apply And I also know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And I also know 2 is congruent to angle 6. We are asked to um, show that it is a rhombus. So we're first going to start out with that given information. Um, and because it's a parallelogram, I know that LM is parallel to PN. And I also know, because it's a parallelogram, both sides are parallel. So PL is can, or parallel to MN. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that information on my picture again. That is because the definition of our parallelogram. Remember the definition back in the first couple sections? All right, because it is a parallelogram, I um, have parallel lines. Now those parallel lines, let's refer back to a couple of chapters ago. Remember, parallel lines give us some congruent angles. So because um, I have parallel lines, I know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. Notice that angle 1 and angle 5 are alternate interior angles. And I also know, using that same, those same um, opposite angles, angle 2 is congruent to angle 6, all because of those parallel lines. So um, alternate interior angles. All right, and then um, that's about all I can use with those parallel lines. But I'm now going to go back to... My given information, I know that 1 and 2 are congruent, and I know that 2 and 6 are congruent. So, um, and I guess we wouldn't really have to put that up there, but because of those properties, notice that 2 kind of connects the exterior angle. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 6 because of that transitive property. Remember, they have that connection angle that is connecting the two together. And then I want you to look at um, angle one and angle five and angle one and angle six. Well, kind of like what we said before, angle one is that connection piece. So now I know that angle five is congruent to angle six because of the transitive property. So going back up here, I'm going to erase some of these things. I know that angle, um, we just said that angle 1 is congruent to angle 6. And I also know that angle 5 is congruent to angle 6, too, from before. Um, and then with our given, I guess I need to remark that given angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Oh, so something is starting to form up there. Notice those diagonals are doing something to those opposite angles. So let's keep going. Because I have this information, and because I have my given information in that, I know that LN bisects. Angle L and angle N because of the definition of an angle bisector. Noticing that this angle is congruent to that one, that is a bisector. Six and five are congruent, that is a bisector. So, what we just kind of learned that a rhombus, because it's a parallelogram, that in the diagonals bisect, then it's a rhombus because of theorem 6.8. 618. All right, go ahead and stop this video. Do your checkpoint. Here is the answer to your checkpoint right there. All right, let's keep on going to our next example.
Um, we, Hector, is measuring the boundaries of his new garden. He wants the garden to be a square. Okay, so that is very important right there. He has set each corner stake to be six feet apart. So I know that this is also six feet, and I know that this is also six feet. What does Hector need to know to make sure his garden is square? So what do we know? We know that opposite sides are congruent. So that tells me it's a parallelogram. We know that opposite sides are congruent. We also know that consecutive sides are congruent. And the only parallelogram with consecutive sides are congruent is our rhombus that we're learning about. All right, so what do we need to know? What else do we need to know to make this a um, square? We need one more thing. So we need... We need the diagonals to be congruent. So we need this, those from the top to the bottom of the garden to be congruent from the left and the right. And if that happens, we know the shape would be considered a rectangle. And if we were a rhombus, and a rectangle, remember from our theorem we just learned 620. If a parallelogram is a rhombus and a rectangle, we know that it is also a square. So what is our answer? This would be our answer. We need to know that the diagonals are congruent. All right, go ahead and stop this video one more time um, and do your last checkpoint. Right here is your answer for that um, problem. We have one more example to do. We love our coordinate geometry. So determine whether the parallelogram is a rhombus, rectangle, or square with the given vertices. List all that applies. So it could be more than one, but we also need to explain. So go ahead and stop this video and draw your figure in your coordinate plane. All right, so if the diagonals are perpendicular, I know that ABCD is either a rhombus or a square. It could be either one of those if I know that it's perpendicular. Remember, perpendicular, you use slope formula. We used that in the last um, book work. The diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. And to find congruent measures, we use the distance formula. Y'all love that. Well, what if they are both congruent and perpendicular? Well, congruent would mean rectangle. Perpendicular would mean rhombus. So if it's a rhombus and a square, you know, or a rhombus and a rectangle, you know that it would be a square. So we need to look for those three different characteristics. So the first thing we need to get done is we need to use the distance formula to compare the lengths of the diagonals. Remember the diagonals are the um, non-consecutive vertices. So we have two diagonals, so we need to do two for distance formula. So I wrote the distance formula over here. I want you to stop this video, and I want you to find the distance of B, D, and A, C. Go ahead and do that real quick. Right after doing the two distance formulas for my diagonals, I get square root of 34 and the square root of 34, which means they are congruent, which means we're on our way. We know that this shape is a rectangle because our segments are congruent. So we need to see if the diagonals are perpendicular. And to be perpendicular, remember, we need the um, opposite reciprocal. So the flip and change it sign, and we do that by solving for the, with the slope 
formula. So here it is again. We keep forgetting. I want you to stop this video. Go ahead and find the slope of BC and find the slope of AC. After doing the slope formula, if you compare the two, notice that this one, if I flip and change its sign, it actually is this slope over here. So we know that AC is perpendicular to BC. Since they're perpendicular, they make that right angle. So we know that this is also a rhombus because those um, diagonals are perpendicular. So our answer, A, B, C, D is A. Remember it said list all that apply. A rectangle, a rhombus, and because of our theorem, we know that it is also a square. And don't forget to explain. So our explanation, Diagonals are perpendicular, which make that rhombus. Diagonals are congruent, which make a rectangle. And if there, it's both a rhombus and a rectangle, then it is also a square. All right, we are finished with this section. Almost finished with Chapter 6. I will see you later.